I'm not focused on the here and now of this case. I'm very concerned about the future. The president has to have immunity. This has nothing to do with me. This has to do with a president in the future for a hundred years from now. If you don't have immunity, you're not going to do anything. You're going to become a ceremonial president. All right, let's go ahead and bring in George Washington University Law School professor Jonathan Turley. Jonathan, great to see you. As you just, you know, Thank you. you've been listening and talking about this all day. You just heard there, you know, a lot of talk today about the future and the historic nature of the decision that these justices are going to make. But isn't it also true that they're probably going to rule in, in a way that is as narrow as possible and try to avoid making a decision that sets things in stone for all presidents for all eternity? I think so. You know, this is an incrementalist court. They like small steps, not great leaps. And you saw that in the argument. You know, the justices didn't seem to be buying the arguments on either side with any relish. There were some. The liberal justices looked like they would be voting for uh, the special counsel, which is not too surprising. But uh, many of their justices were as concerned about the sweeping implications of what Jack Smith is arguing as they were what Donald Trump was arguing. And there seemed to be an interest in finding a third option. But that third option would require likely a remand and a further delay of that case. So we kept hearing um, today from the defense that, excuse me, from the prosecution, that, you know, there's this common understanding that presidents are subject to criminal liability. Take a listen to that side of it today. It's baked into the Constitution that any president knows that they are exposed to potential criminal prosecution. It's common ground that all former presidents have known that they could be indicted and convicted. And Watergate cemented that understanding. So what place do you think this so-called common understanding has in the law and in this <laughs> case specifically? Well, it's not quite as clear as was suggested, because remember, there were two Nixon cases. One granted absolute immunity on civil cases, and the court has never answered to what extent that extends to criminal cases. This is also the first president ever to stand trial. Uh, for a, a crime. You had, uh, President Grant was arrested and had a small fine, but that's it. So the history is rather thin on this point. And that does worry uh, these justices. And, you know, the, the special counsel came up and said, look, you know, perish the thought that we can't be trusted with this power and that we would ever be vindictive. And, uh, you know, there was a little bit of chuckling with that. And one of the justices said, whoa, you know, putting aside recent years, the, you, the Department of Justice has long history of abusive prosecutions. And the, re, the response from the special counsel was sort of like, well, trust us, we're the government. And that was clearly not selling the, the argument to some of these justices. They wanted a little more to guarantee the stability of the democratic system. Trust the government always goes down well with people. You know, right. in my experience. Uh, we have to leave it there, Jonathan, but thank you for staying with us uh, and thank sharing you. your analysis. We appreciate it.